Okay, so who was the last monarch with any real political power? As always, I'm a London channel, so I will not be talking about Scottish monarchs or Danish monarchs or Spanish monarchs, I'm sorry. So different people are going to give different answers to this question, because it wasn't that one day we took away all the monarch's power, it's that the monarch's power has been decreasing gradually for centuries. So we normally start this story in 1215, when King John loses a war against his own barons, and they force him to sign Magna Carta, which basically says that the king has to follow some rules too. Parliament, as a thing, starts to coalesce around the 14th century, and from then on, every time the king is weak, he needs Parliament's help, and Parliament's like, all right, but you'll have to give us some more power. This culminates in 1649, when King Charles I also loses a war against his own Parliament. This time they don't just make him sign a charter, though, this time they cut off his head. But even so, when we reinstate the next king, it's not that they have no political power at all, they're not just a puppet for Parliament. For example, in the 1690s, William III was doing things like leading armies into battle, and setting up the Bank of England. I think the tide really starts to turn with this guy. This is George I, he's from Germany, he doesn't speak English very well, so he's really reliant on his ministers to do stuff for him. One of his ministers in particular, Robert Walpole, gets so much power that he is known as the first Prime Minister. And from there on, I guess it's a pretty steady trend downwards. Uh, now to be clear, the Queen still has a lot of political power, in name only. So for example, she's the one who chooses the Prime Minister, and technically she could choose whoever she wanted if she, if she feels like it, but she just always picks the one who's won the election. Prisons are Her Majesty's prisons, the army is Her Majesty's armed forces. Every single bill that passes in this country has to have royal assent. Now when I was taught about this system at school, I was taught that the Queen gives her assent to every bill, no matter what it is. And it's true that no monarch has refused royal assent since 1708. But lately The Guardian's been doing a lot of investigating on this sort of thing, and it looks like, although the Queen has never refused assent to a bill, um, that behind the scenes her officials are talking to Parliament about bills before they get that far, meaning that she actually has immunity from quite a lot of laws. Stuff like how much pollution you're allowed to put out, and whether you can shoot endangered animals. Also, laws on paying your workers' pensions, and health and safety in the workplace, and whether you're allowed to do hiring discrimination. So yeah, this is very much a developing story, not a finished one. Watch this space. 